Hello everyone. Welcome to Indian Economy by Aman Soni. In today's news are, we would be discussing the important articles related to economy from the Hindu newspaper. In the editorial page, there is an article about India-Russia trade and the impact. In the previous news hours, we have discussed about how the merchandise trade exports of India, that is exports in goods crossed the 400 billion dollar target that we have kept for the first time we have achieved the target of 400 billion dollars and we have crossed it even before the time period which is a very good thing for indian economy and the performers in the export are the engineering goods segment and the apparel and garment segments because of the increase in the engineering goods by almost 50% over the last year and the ready-made government goods the exports also increased by more than 30% compared to the last year we could be able to achieve the 400 billion mark target even the petroleum products sector performed very well Indian refiners majorly import the crude oil refined in India and exports the petrol and diesel now because of the increase in crude oil prices the basic input cost was high and the refinery cost on the refinery commission that became high the margin became high and the cost at which we exported that also obviously became high because of which our revenues from the oil refinery business also increased and one thing all this growth was achieved when there were various challenges in the global supply chains now we have the russia ukraine conflict Previously, we had logistical challenges like the container shortages, wherein because of the shortage in the shipping containers, the price of the shipping freight, the cost of transportation had increased, even though in spite of all these challenges, we have achieved the target, so which is very good for the economy. And this has been possible only because of the inter-ministry coordination and the Indian embassies looking for the business opportunities where India could export. But the editorial says at the same time we have certain challenges that we are facing on the trade front. Our imports have ex ex increased more than our exports like always and the deficit as trade deficit has more than doubled which is a thing for concern and the trade deficit is more than 175 billion dollars and this gap is more than what it was during the covid pandemic so there is a conflicting situation wherein on one hand our exports have increased more than the target on the other hand the trade deficit has also more than doubled compared to the last year and there is going to be global inflation in the commodity prices because of russia ukraine conflict and that would have repercussions on the indian economy and when we look at the import trends of various sectors we can observe that the purchase of capital goods into India for new projects was less what does this imply this implies that the private sector is not investing fresh investments into the economy because when you are making fresh investments for the new businesses you would import capital goods for the production of goods and services Capital goods are goods which are used in the production of other goods. For example, heavy machinery used in manufacturing is an example of capital good. So the reduction in capital good imports show that the private sector has not been happily investing into the economy because they still feel that the economy is not doing well because of COVID pandemic and now because of Russia-Ukraine conflict, everyone would be wary. The government is thinking of enabling the Russia ruble trade so that the trade payments to Russia happens easily. The editorial says that we have to go beyond these measures and we have to quickly deal with the free trade agreement negotiations that we are doing with the other countries like UK, UAE, etc. So that because of the lower reduction in tariffs which comes out of the free trade agreements, our trade would be further increased in the future. This article talks about the data accessibility bill in february last month the ministry of information and technology released the 
draft India Data Accessibility and Use Policy 2022. It had opened it for public consultation. So the basic aim of this policy is whatever the government collects as data, the government data, it has to make it open source so that the data would be used both by the public and private sector seamlessly and harness the efficiency that comes from the data usage and it would also help in policy and decision making. So it would open up the public sector data for informed decision making and to increase the accessibility of public services and also to help the digital innovation in the economy because if you want to make a new business you need to know what are the needs of the customers and to know that you need to have surveys and the data shows what are the needs of the customer what is the trends and preferences of the people what are the various things that is happening in the economy all that could be analyzed quantifiably objectively through the data now lack of access to data is the main problem for many of the startups in india and if the government can open up all the data that it has collected just the non-personal data to the market and if it can generate some revenue by leasing out the data so that private sector also can use the data for the businesses and targeting products to customers it would help everyone it would get revenue to the government it could improve the service delivery it when the data is given to other government departments also it would lead to meaningful policy decision making this draft policy it tried to achieve certain things which were previously hindering previous challenges that we are facing and that was previously the government data was not transparent a particular department would collect data and it would keep it with other itself and some other department would co conduct a survey and that particular data would remain with that department itself the other department would not get access because of that it was the data was fragmented between various departments and the data was not anonymized the personal details of the beneficiaries of various government schemes and all that was part of the data set because of which the data would not be made available to the public now the draft policy tries to solve the issue by anonymizing the data in the data set for example take an excel sheet where there is name age place other number the benefits that they received to various government schemes the payments that they received through various schemes etc in this all the personal details would be removed and just the other details would be given that way the anonymous the privacy of the individual would be protected through anonymization of data and the data quality standards were not there one department would collect data in a particular format other department would collect the data in some other format and because of which both this data could not be compared because the format and the variables everything would be so different now in this aspect of government technology 3.0 approach wherein the government wants to unlock the value of public sector data to the market it tries for go for the open government data it seeks to harness the data potential for the economic development and in improving the governance but there are various challenges with the draft bill and those are the draft bill is no, silent on what are the norms rules mechanisms that are going to be there how is the data going to be shared what are the rules all that probably just the data bill is just in the public consultation stage the rules would be formed after the bill is becomes an act and in order to the data to be used properly we need to ensure greater citizen awareness participation engagement but again there comes challenges what about the anonymity what about protecting the privacy of the individual what about the data leaks what about the security aspect what if the data gets hacked so all these things need to be taken care of on one side there is right to information where the people should be given access to information on the other side through the data protection bill we have to anonymize the data so somewhere we have to balance between both anonymizing the data and providing personal details under right to information act and there is an aspect of government to government department to department data sharing even if the main data points are anonymized but 
if if a government department wants to accumulate all the data sets with different government departments it could still lead to analyzing the group trends for example if we take a subsidy we would know if we take food subsidy for example even if the personal data details of the beneficiaries are removed from the data set if we collect all the data from different states we would know which category of people or which caste people received more subsidies and this would lead to challenges and problems in the future even though there is no personal information the group data analytics would be helpful for the government departments and if they try to exploit that it would lead to certain challenges and issues in the economy in the future and one more aspect the data collected by the government agencies are where the government departments would be treated as the owners of the data here under the bill so the draft policy has a problem again because if the government departments are treated as the owner it is for the owner of the data to keep the data open or restricted or make it non shareable so if the government department feels that that particular data has to be restricted then what is the purpose of even getting a public data sharing bill it would challenge and very impact the very purpose of getting the bill so the author suggests that the government should just perform as the data trustee that means it should collect the data hold the data and give it to public access such a way that it acts as a trust and the data quality has to be paid due attention we need to come up with licensing frameworks on how to license the data what is going to be the various rules and regulations and what are the associated costs etc and the government should also have aspects regarding the voluntary data sharing because if the purpose of the draft data accessibility bill is going for democratic democratization of data if there is voluntary data sharing by various department half of the problem is already solved and even when it comes to the data sets collected by the private sector the european union has made act wherein even the private sector data that is the data collected by the private companies they have to be mandatorily made access to public in certain exceptional cases like the public emergencies even india should have one such clause where in terms of emergency even the private data that is collected by the private companies has to be made public for the public purpose here the author suggests a solution wherein a government non profit organization should be made for example the non personal data authority and this non personal data authority would be restrict requested by the government for creation of a high value data set in specific times for example during the covid pandemic we need to know quickly the number of people that got vaccinated how the vaccine is affecting different age groups so here the government would have some data and various hospitals and research clinics would have some other data which is not there with the government in such a time this npda non personal data authority would mandate the private sector in because of the public emergency to release such data to the government so that the government could meaningfully make it access to public and we could come for through analyzing the data we could come through meaningful conclusions and policy decisions and in all this there has to be detailed checks and balances when it comes to mandatory data sharing also so that there won't be any misuse of data happening there has to be system for checks and balances and the high value data sets that are disclosed during the public emergencies they have to be treated as social knowledge they have to be treated as public goods so the authors finally suggest that we need to have some evolve a new social contract for data wherein the data should be the high value data important for the public use it has to be treated as social common that is public good and it used to be used for the welfare of all the people and the government should act like a trustee with fiduciary responsibility 
to promote the data as a public good and the government should also democratize the data use it should reduce the centralization the access to data that only few firms have and everybody should get access to the public data and it should also make accountable institutional mechanisms so that there would be checks and balances in the data access and sharing by doing all this we will be able to seize the opportunity that data provides because in this age the adage goes data is the new oil here us allies plan to turn off russian gas now because of the conflict slowly all the european countries are trying to stop import of russian gas germany which is the biggest importer of gas from europe even it is trying to reduce the gas imports that it is taking from russia by june end and this is making russia to look for other alternatives and give gas at various discounts for other countries which countries like india are happily importing here we just need to read the headlines no need to go through the details russia's gas from said to seek gas payments in euros from gale in the previous news as we have discussed about how the government is thinking to evolve a payment mechanism wherein because we are not able to make payments in the us dollars to russian companies we need to evolve russian ruble payment mechanism or the rupee payment mechanism now the gas from which is a very big russian gas company it has asked the gale india limited for making payments in euros because the us dollars would not be able to made because the russian companies have been removed from the swift payment mechanism now it wants the payments to be made in europe and gale can happily make the payments because gale imports to the european customers and it gets payments in euros so it can use the same euros to pay to the gas from now rbi sets geo tagging rules for payment touch points payment touch points are where the digital payments happen for example the point of sale terminal where we swipe the debit card or credit card where we scan the quick response qr code and make payment in a shop so geo tagging what is geo tagging when when you link the location of the transaction to that particular financial transaction that is known as geo tagging for example when you try to make the payment through phone pay paytm and the apps recently in last few months it would have asked you to switch on your location it would ask you to give location access because the location would be recorded in the device and that particular payment would be tagged it would be linked to that particular location so that in in data analytics when rbi looks at the huge data set it would know what amount of payments are happening in what locations and what are the places where the payments have not been happening because if if the payments are happening heavily in one place in some geographical area it means the digital infrastructure in that and the access to digital payment services in that area is high and if some payments are not happening in some areas of the country RBI could focus on those areas and it would made available the di digital infrastructure so that it would provide e inclusive access to all the people we need not go through this news we can skip it gujarat tops again in export preparedness Niti Aayog has released the exports preparedness report and Gujarat has again got the first place and after that the second third and fourth place are occupied by Maharashtra Karnataka and Tamil Nadu We need to observe one thing here all the states here in question Maharashtra Karnataka Tamil Nadu and Gujarat they are all coastal trades because the bulk of the trade happens in terms of coastal shipping the coastal states the majority of the exports also happen from the ports in these states and they have access to the ports and they get more revenues because of the trade and various parameters are considered under this report they are export promotion and facilitation what is the policy supported by the government 
business and export ecosystem what is the ease of access to export eco ecosystem if you apply for a permission in how much time would you get it if the goods are stuck in the customs how much time you would be able to release the goods what are the challenges that you are going to face and what is the performance in the outbound shipments etc and there are various challenges that the indian export preparedness report shows there are inter and intra regional differences in export infrastructure for example we, we just observed that the major exports are happening from the coastal states it is very obvious because the coastal states have the seaports and they have export infrastructure logistical handling facilities the major exports happen from these states and they get revenue from the trade and interior states which are landlocked those states would not get the same access to export infrastructure so here the government has to invest into those states and promote special economic zones in those states so that manufacturing would be picked up in even in those states and other things which india always suffers is when it comes to research and development the research and development expenditure on the export infrastructure is very low that is a other challenge which we need to focus upon and improve on this article talks about the sugar exports brazil is always the largest sugar producer and india is the second largest producer now because this year the output in brazil got affected because of various reasons because of the droughts and monsoons the production of sugar in brazil is low and india in india it was the opposite the sugar production increased because of which because the production in brazil was low we heavily exported and we gained revenue from the sugar exports but now even though the exports were high we are even though the production was high we are heavily exporting because of which there might be a future shortage in the domestic economy for that the government is thinking to limit the runs of export that we are go going to supply to the global economy and the government is planning to limit it to 8 million tons of sugar exports and the government is also thinking of levying a export levy so if the government levies an additional tax or additional charge on the export of sugar it would discourage the exporters from exporting in such way there won't be any domestic shortage happening and the prices in the domestic economy would be stable in that way again when the domestic supply is stable the government can again remove the levy or it can increase the exports again and if the production is bumper crop in the next term again we can remove the levy so that we can encourage the exports again and one more thing here because of the oil crisis now the sugar companies the factories they are heavily producing the ethanol the government is also heavily pushing for 20% of ethanol blending and because of ethanol sales to the global economy the sugar factories are also earning heavily because we can substitute the petrol and diesel by blending with ethanol ethanol is a cheaper alternative compared to the crude so the revenue of the sugar companies are increasing even in this aspect these are the articles related to economy today thank you so much